the Bucks if they don't have Giannis. I give him a shot. I, hell, I was, I was <laughs> Skip. I, 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 we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, and I said, Skip, I think if even whomever comes out of the East, I believe the Suns would be the favorite. And so, with or without Giannis, I always thought the Suns was going to be the favorite in these in, in the matchups. Um, obviously, it becomes a more daunting task if you don't have the best player, a two-time league MVP. Yeah, it would become a, a very a, an uphill climb. But I would give them a chance because Middleton, we 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 saw what he's capable of doing, Skip. Now he's ex extremely streaky. Now, we saw another 20-point, 23-point third quarter, Skip. Remember the other night we saw a 20-point fourth quarter. So we know he can get it going. We see True Holiday starting to pick up his scoring. And that's the thing. When a player like a Giannis goes out, someone is going to have to get those shots. So you're going to have to divvy up the 20 shots that Giannis, 20, 25 shots Giannis normally gets. Someone else gets to divvy those up. Yep. Also, it forces Budenholzer. Now, Skip, I'm not saying that he's not a great X and O guy because I believe he is, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I think he's terrible at adjustments. Giannis being out forced him to play Bobby Portis because he was unwilling, for whatever reason, to play Portis. Yep. Portis is a six foot ten guy. He can score the basketball. He can rebound. He shoots okay threes. I think I still believe they shoot far too many threes. But Skip, the task becomes even more difficult if you don't have a Giannis. If you have Giannis. I believe it's a coin flip. I would favor Sun slightly. But if you don't have Giannis, say what, he misses a game, misses two games, you could find yourself in the 0-2 hole. Now, do you believe the Milwaukee Bucks have the wherewithal to be down 0-2 and to beat a Phoenix team? I do not. And I know everybody, well, they beat, they beat the, uh, the, uh, the, the Nets. Yeah, with a hobble James Harden and no Kyrie, the final two, uh, uh, what, four, five mm -hmm. games. Yep. So I don't believe that's possible, but they need to get Giannis back as soon as possible. But I would give them a chance, although it would be a very slim chance, mm. to beat the Suns without Giannis. Mm. So here is what I would find fascinating. I just have a sneaking suspicion that the Bucks are going to win one of these two Phoenix games without Giannis. And if they do, if they steal one, as they say around NBA circles, and they go home and Giannis says, you know what, I got to suck it up, I got to tough it out, I got to go, then the weight of the NBA world would be on Giannis to show that he makes them X factor better right. so that they could win the two games right. at home. Because if they go home with Giannis, and I don't know. Look, it's so hard to talk about this. I don't know how hobbled he is because they're right. not saying what it is. They didn't say strain. They didn't say right. sprain. They didn't say bruise. They didn't say anything. Right. It was a hyperextension. So it bent backwards. Buckle back. Did, did it. Usually when that happens, you have high probability of tearing a little bit of your cartilage. Mm -hmm. Is there a small tear in the cartilage? We don't know any of that. Correct. And they won't divulge any of that except to say he's day to day. Aren't we all? Okay, yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> so I'm going to guess, for the purpose of this debate, debate okay. that he will not play in game one. I don't know about game two, but it seems like game one is coming too quickly right. for him to be ready for game one. So it's game two on Thursday? I think so. Okay. I mean, I didn't okay. even look about this, but I assume yeah. they're going to go every other day, and okay. then there might be a break until Dude, Sunday or whatever. Right. Okay. I, I, I need to look at this. But the point is that if they do steal one of these games – it's going to make you wonder what I brought up on Friday's show. Are they playing better, more efficient offensive basketball without Giannis? I know it's, it, look, in a vacuum, it's, it's preposterous to say they're better they're off better without, without Giannis. And, and I'm the first to tell you, no, they're not in a vacuum. Right. I'm just eye testing what I just saw in back-to-back -back games, right. five and six, against Atlanta, at Milwaukee, and then at Atlanta. Right. And I think it was really hard to win that game six at Atlanta mm -hmm. because you know how crazed that crowd was they, they and were. how it was just on the edge of their seats, mm -hmm. at least to force it back to a game seven Correct. at Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. So what my eye test is telling me is they have three guys who have made all-star teams, and all of a sudden they felt empowered, emboldened to star. Right. And it started with Brooke Lopez, especially in game five. Right. But in game six, Brooke Lopez was quietly a force because he had three more blocks. And look at look at your box score. Look at the plus minus of Brooke Lopez. You ever see anything like almost this? Almost doubled everybody that he almost the court. doubled the whole team with a plus twenty five. Mm -hmm. And obviously the only hawk with a plus was Cam Reddish, who came in and just lit it up. Right. And I love Cam Reddish. 
situation. I wish he had been able to play a little more a little sooner in right. that series. But the point is, Brooke Lopez says the point differential was doing dramatic work. You know, right. he was having a, a quiet impact on that game. And we know what he did when he made 14 of 18 shots in, in the game right. five, which was the turning point game right. at Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. So to me, Brooke Lopez is cleared to go down low and wreak havoc down low because he's bigger than Giannis. Right. He's, he's at least an inch, maybe two inches taller right. than Giannis, and he's thick. He, he's yeah, a man. Yeah, he's about 40 yeah, pounds. He, at least by 40, maybe 50 or 60 <laughs> pounds. He's yeah. just a big man. Right. So it gives you a, a more of a lane presence than Giannis can create. Right. You know, obviously, we've seen Giannis flame out in series after playoff series mm -hmm. because they, quote, unquote, build a wall. Right. And there's nowhere for him to go except to shoot little mid-range jump shots. And he doesn't really have that shot. Right. Or to drift out and shoot three-point shots. Which they the, gladly through, accept. Through the playoffs, he's 18% from the three-point. Right. Okay. And if you foul him and put him on the line, it's getting worse and worse with the chanting. And I'm sure the Phoenix Suns fans will just pick right up right. if Giannis plays at Phoenix. Yes. And, you know, one, two, three, and quick count him, and it right. screws him up a little bit. And he's liable to shoot a couple of free throw air balls, which is liable to take the air and the steam and the heart out of his right. own team because it's just hard to watch your MVP shooting air balls either from the free throw line or the three-point well, line. Well, Skip, we talked about this is because – Brooke Lopez can't occupy the space that Giannis occupies. See, Brooke Lopez can hang out around the three-point line and occasionally get hot from three. Giannis can't I mean, hang it's, out. It's rare right. to get hot. But, he, but, he's okay. But, but Giannis yes. can't hang out there. He cannot so hang out there. So we can't have two seven-footers occupying the same space. Okay. And now this brings me to Chris Middleton. Something is going on with this guy. And I had a weird incident <laughs> happen on Saturday night. I'm, I'm watching Saturday early evening here. But Ernestine walks in and out of the room. I was actually in the living room watching instead of back in my little cubby hole that she makes me watch. Oh, because you didn't have no vested interest I in this I didn't have one. a rooting oh. interest. So this was okay. There's no jinx factor because I don't really care who wins. Exactly. In fact, I was rooting for the Hawks because I kind of wanted to see game a game seven. seven. But it wasn't like I was screaming and yelling for right. the Hawks. So she wanders in at the start of the third quarter, sits down, and says, you know what, just out of the blue, she says, I really like Chris Middleton. And I'm like, you what? You like Chris Middleton? Why? She said, I don't know. He just seems like a good guy. Well, I'll, I'll buy that. But right. she'd never talked. She, she loves the NBA, but she never talked about Chris Middleton. Right. Because to me, he's pretty boring right. as a quote unquote star. Right. He doesn't have any rough edge to him. Right. He, he's not much in post game interviews. Right. I don't know that much about his background, except he played at Texas A&M is from South Carolina. Right. But I, I don't know anymore. Like, right. I, I don't I can't focus and, and latch on to him or get my arm around Chris Middleton. Skip, when you talk about Chris Middleton, you're not you think about handles. You think about a guy that can elevate like Zion. You think about a guy that can shoot like KD or shoot threes like Steph Curry. No, he just he. But he, he, ha he has made two All Star teams. He'd have been perfect, perfect for your Spurs. And he would have been, <laughs> but he plays perfectly in Giannis's shadow yes. as the second star. Yes. So all of a sudden she says that, and we're sitting there, and he comes down on the very next possession, makes the three. Right. Okay, and then there's a miss by the Hawks, and he comes right down, and he makes another three. Right. And you know what was proceeding to happen. <laughs> yes. I said, you're incredible. You're like an oracle. You're a psychic. <laughs> because he proceeds, as you pointed out, to make to score 23, 23 in the third quarter, and it's a blowout. that They blew him off right. the floor. And right. I know the Hawks made a great run because they went from 22 down to 6 down in the fourth quarter. But the, the hole got dug so deeply right. by Chris Middleton in the third quarter that it made me sit back and say, wait a second, something's going on here. Because I saw him in game six and going back to game three also in Atlanta right. go berserk. Go 20 and that in the was fourth. A, 20 in the fourth. Okay, what have we heard about Chris Middleton going into, s certainly through the, the Brooklyn series, mm -hmm. is that he has been pathetic away from home. Correct. So I looked at last night. So in nine road games through these, <clears throat> these playoffs, he shot 31% from three on the road. Mm -hmm. They're five and four on the road, 31%. At home, where they're seven and one, <clears throat> excuse me, through the playoffs, he shot 38% from three. So you can live with that. It's, it's a huge Sweet. difference, except the 31 has started to come up because of two quarters where he's gone berserk from three in two quarters. Right. And he looked like a star. Right. He, he looked like something like it something was happening here where, where you saw him emerge where he wasn't afraid of no State Farm Arena. 
all of a sudden, he looked like it was his home away from home. But, Skip, I think the biggest thing is, is that he doesn't have to defer when Giannis isn't there. Okay, I got I it. I get it. I'm number I got two, it. Skip. So no matter what I do, if Giannis is on the court, Skip, I still got to give him the ball. Even though okay. I'm get, I, I still got to give it to him. Well, didn't he look like a pretty good number one? Yes, 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 yes. And, and didn't Drew Holiday suddenly yeah. look like the all-star that right. he has been? I know he only made one, but, but still, he has star quality right. about him. And now I'm starting to look at the numbers. No Giannis. Right. Well, he's a different player because on Saturday night, he goes 27, 9, and 9. So right. he's real close to a triple-double, a big triple-double. Mm -hmm. And then I look back at game five at home, and he went 25, 6, and 13 assists. Well, well, he's emerging as a force. Right. As a force. Middleton and Holiday, right before your very eyes, have turned into forces without Giannis. Well, and you, but you're asking an awful lot of Holiday because you're saying, okay, guard, one of, their, guard. Okay. one of their better offensive weapons. It was Kyrie, and then maybe it's James Harden. And then we throw you on KD, but we still need you to give you those points. But Skip, remember now, those 20 to 25 shots that Giannis normally gets, they've got to go somewhere. So now Middleton gets five or six of those. Okay. Now, Holiday gets five or six of those. Bobby Portis is in the ball game. He gets seven or eight of those. Skip, even P.J. Tucker got ten shots. When the last time you saw P.J. Tucker take ten shots? Okay. In every game, very sneakily on the box score, I look and P.J. will have eight, nine, ten rebounds. Yes. At what, what do we call I don't think he's more than like six, six four. Five. Six five, maybe. 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 He doesn't yeah. look six five right. to me. But he is a wide body. He is stout. He is a bulldog. He will play his tail he off. He does. And, and he'll get you. He'll scratch and claw and get you eight, nine, ten rebounds. It's a six-point ball game, Skip. They miss. Okay, we get the rebound. We can cut it to four. Here come P.J. Tucker out of the crowd one. with the ball. He did. And it was <laughs> he came out of the crowd with the ball. He did. And that's what he does. Right. And you mentioned Bobby Portis. He looks like he belongs in the starting yes. lineup because he's 6'10", 250 pounds. Right. So on Saturday night, he got nine more rebounds. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's hard to beat this when... Like, Lopez has never rebounded to his size to me. Correct. But he is a rim protector at the yes. highest. In 20, it'll be 2020, the 2020 season, he, he made second team all defense. Right. And was second in the league in block shots. Well, trust me on this. Brooke Lopez will make life fairly difficult for DeAndre Ayton. Yes. But more difficult than Zubats was able to. You think or, so? Or the Clippers, because the Clippers finally tried to guard him small. But listen. Brooke Lopez is long. He is long, strong, and savvy. He's been doing this for a long time. He will cause him some problems. I tell you what he will do that Zubats couldn't do is that he will force him to come out, out of that paint because Brooke Lopez can shoot the three. Well, and you got to yeah. respect him, Skip. Even though he might not shoot 40%, no. you still got to respect him out there. So now if we drag Aiton away from the basket, does Middleton now have a better opportunity? Does Holiday have a better opportunity? Mm. If and when Giannis comes back, you know Giannis is trying to get to the rim. Yep. Well, it's going to be a little bit more difficult if Aiton is standing up under there and you're trying to get to the rim. Okay. So don't underestimate how good defensively they are without Giannis. And I, I got it. Giannis, uh, Giannis can just jump out of the gym at whatever, do we call him, 6'11", maybe? Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's long and springy. But so B Brooke Lopez can hold his own right. rim protector. Right. And then when we talk about defending, listen, Chris Middleton can defend can. like crazy. Yeah. Like, like he's yeah. a really good yeah. on-ball point. They're a good defensive team, Skip. You go P.J. Tucker, just think about their starting lineup normally would be. It would be Giannis, Holiday, Middleton, Tucker. Skip, you got four defenders right there. And, and uh, Lopez, mm -hmm. who's been an all-defensive mm -hmm. player. So you got your five, of your, oh, five of your starters can guard. Okay, so all of a sudden, it's not like you lose on defense all that much no, without no, no, Giannis. No, 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 You're still high quality. Right. And I don't know, I wouldn't call Portis a great defender, but he's, he's just a physical presence. Right. He, he will assert his... his he's 6'10", he's long. He, he is long. And then Connerton comes off the bench, and Teague had a, like, out of nowhere, had a nice yeah, run late yeah, in the game. Yeah. We know what he's been doing. And then Bryn Forbes can shoot threes. Right. So... I do like their team enough without Giannis that now the pressure is all on the home team to me because right. these guys are just free shooting it now. Right. Well, nobody's going to expect them. What are they? I think they're five and a half point underdogs right. for game one mm -hmm. tomorrow night. Well, I, I do like their chances to win one of these games because we, we saw what they did on the road at Atlanta. Right. And I'm not saying Atlanta is as good as Phoenix because it's not. Right. And obviously, Trey was hurt. We're going to talk about Trey in just a couple of minutes here. But the point is, I do think they're, 
they're they're united enough as a team. The ball moves better right. without Giannis. It does. That that they're going to cause different problems for Phoenix enough. They're going to win one of these games at Phoenix. Let me tell you why I don't trust Milwaukee. Is the very thing that allowed the Hawks to get back in this ball game when they were down 2022 because they come down and jack up a bunch of threes. Yeah. The ball game skip the ball game was well in hand. And then here come Holiday jacks up three threes in a row. Yep. And then you get Middleton jack, jacking up a couple he, of threes. He went 0 for 4 in the fourth quarter. He also made his free throws. Right. Then he makes six free throws out of six in the fourth quarter. So that sort of kept him at bay. And you know the three point shot, Skip, will allow you to get back in ball games because yep. we've seen teams have 20 point leads and all of a sudden lose the ball game. We saw the, uh, the Sixers lose a 26 point lead, yep. an 18 point lead. So we've seen big leads blown. Uh, Utah had a big lead on, on the Clippers. And the three-point shot gets you back into the ball game. So you start jacking up threes. You allow the opposing team to get back into the ball game. So that's why I don't really trust Milwaukee because I've watched them on several occasions dominate the paint, get 65, 68 points in the paint, and somehow still manage to shoot 36 threes. I'm like, how? Why would you want to do that? Mm. Analytics. <laughs> okay. No, seriously, <laughs> that's just how they built the team, and so they say that's what we do, and I think they're encouraged to do that. And if they go cold, they go south. I like the analytics of the Suns. Yeah. Chris Paul says, you know what, I can shoot the three, but if I can get to this mid-range, I'm fine. Devin Booker says, you know what, I mean, they got a handful of guys. Obviously, a crowd hangs out around the three-point line, Mikael yeah. Bridges. But, Skip, if you got a 20-point lead and I can take two dribbles and instead of having a 22-foot three, have a 14-foot a, a, a two, yeah. why not? I hear you. Which brings us to a guy who doesn't shoot many threes, Chris Paul. I'm going to say this one more time. The more I sleep on it, the more I think about it. What he did in game six at Staples <laughs> was just extraordinary. It was crazy. It, it, was so, it was so improbable because that's not who he is. Right. That's not what you would expect nope. from him. It's not what he does. He made seven of eight threes. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. So if you think back to his playoff run, he busts up his shoulder against the Lakers, and it looked like he couldn't even dribble with his right hand. Right, he couldn't. Then he gets COVID. I have no idea if it took anything out of him at all. They said he didn't have any symptoms, so maybe not. But then... It looked like it took something out over the first couple the of first games. The first couple of games. Well, even on just fitness level, right. whatever. But then, weirdly, now he's saying... He tore some ligaments in his right. shooting hand. I don't know where, how, when, right. but that's what he said. And if Chris Paul says he has torn, I believe him. Right. And he says he's managing it. The, the rest, the time off has been great for right. him. But think about how unlikely it was for him to go off in, in game six that right. way at Staples. Remember, w once they cut it down to what they get? It, seven. seven. They got it to seven with maybe a couple of minutes mm -hmm. left in the third. He scores 27 points the rest mm -hmm. of the way, late third right. through the fourth. I think he went on a personal 8-0 run to get it back to 15 and make yeah. Ty Luke call another timeout. Skip, I think the thing is, though, I believe Holiday and Middleton will need to be more efficient than what they were in the Atlanta series. Sure. I, I don't believe you can shoot 10 of 25 or shoot, you know, 9 of 24 mm -hmm. and, and beat the I Phoenix agree. Suns. Okay. But I do think they're equipped to defend Chris and yeah, Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I'm, I'm anxious to see the matchup. Do they take Holiday and put him on Booker or do they take Holiday and put him on Chris Paul and leave Middleton on Booker? How, how, I, so I would, what, what I would think Holiday on Chris. That, that's what... Because he's he's the smaller, and put, and put, shiftier and put player. Middleton, mm -hmm. put Middleton on, on book. Yeah. So what do you do with Tuck? <laughs> I don't know. You just have to mix and match. But he may be able to take some turns on Devin Book. Right. right. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So I I like that. Right. I, I like I'm looking that. for the game within the game. That's what I'm saying. So in the end, I believe they're going to take one of these games, and you don't think they're I don't think take they one are. Of games. I'm t Skip. Brooke Lopez is going to have to be on his best behavior because yeah. DeAndre Ayton is playing out of his he mind. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Brooke Lopez has been here and done all this. Oh, I mean, he he's been around a long time. He's 33 years of age, yeah. and and he's made an All Star team. That that's a, that's a giraffe, Skip. That's a gazelle. Yeah. He running. I mean, he is running the floor. I got He's it. getting offensive rebounds. So, you know, you said Brooke Lopez is not the greatest rebounder at his size. No. He's going to need to be. He's going to be. He's going to need to be Shaq on the boards. Well, well, here we go. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.